edition of The Dish this morning, Alan Stillman. He's been revolutionizing how we eat and need for more than five decades. His singles bar would grow into a worldwide restaurant chain, and the steakhouses he founded are iconic. I caught up with Stillman a few weeks ago here in New York. At Smith & Walensky's iconic Midtown Chop House, it's all about the steak and the sizzle. All of that describes founder Alan Stillman. But it's his unique philosophy on restaurant life that takes the cake. Fake it until you make it. What made you think you had the skill set to do this? Lack of knowledge. I had no understanding that I couldn't do it. He opened his first bar and restaurant in 1965 with a $5,000 loan from his mother. Is it fair to say you got into the business because you wanted to meet women? Absolutely fair. <laughs> Not only fair, but accurate and true. And it worked. But you insisted on good food. You insisted on an atmosphere. Excuse me. I insisted on good French fries and hamburgers. <laughs> Beyond that, I didn't know anything, that's for sure. We just discovered it as we went along. The bar would become a hot spot for unmarried men and women on New York's Upper East Side. It was a magical clientele that provided the perfect combination. I think that you have been dubbed the man who invented the singles bar. No, they only call me the man that invented <laughs> the singles bar. I happened to open up a restaurant that turned into a singles bar. At the time, there was an awful lot of luck involved. The first piece of luck was calling it TGI Fridays. Stillman would go on to open around 12 TGI Fridays before selling. There are now 870 restaurants around the world. Is it a kick to see that your singles bar is now like a family friendly restaurant? Neither way. I do get a kick of getting out of a plane in uh, Istanbul and having a TGA Fridays in my face 50 years later, that I get a kick out of. But in 1974, Stillman decided it was time to sell and took off for Europe. Six years later, he opened another iconic landmark, although Smith & Walensky was the restaurant that stumbled out of the gate. That first review in the New York Times. For Smith & Walensky here? Yes. Well, that almost put us out of business in 1978. How did you recover? Uh, we recovered by taking out two full-page ads in the New York Times. And they said, with a matchbook cover, at last, a match for the Palm and Chris Sella. And the following week, we started doing business in double and more than double every day. Stillman has opened and sold seven Smith & Walensky's from Chicago to London, always maintaining ownership of the flagship here in New York. There really is no Smith and no Lewinsky, is there? No Smith, no Walensky. So where did the name come from? Sitting around here, a little bit smashed, maybe a little bit stoned, <laughs> two, three weeks before opening and absolutely no name whatsoever, and a lot of money invested. And we finally said at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, get a phone book. Get and we took the New York City phone book, and we put it on the table, and we flipped the first page, and up came Smith. <laughs> and we said, no, no, you can't call the place Smith. That's not possible. So we flipped it again, and it came up Walensky. And somebody said, no, you can't call the place Walensky. I got up the next morning and I said, hey, we said we were going to do it. Let's use both names. We'll use Smith and Walensky. And it went from there. From father to son, Michael Silman oversees the family's 11 quality branded restaurants and what can feel like a classic mom and pop shop. The Stillman's employees have been around for decades. So how long have the two of you collectively worked here at Smith & Walensky? We need a calculator. Need a <laughs> 45. Wow, 45 and? 37. 37. That's a lot of years. <laughs> yes, it is. Danny Kassane started carrying boxes in 1981. Today, he's director of purchasing, overseeing all the meat for the restaurant. Uh, yes, we certainly can accommodate you, yes. Manager Sam Pack started bartending at TGI Fridays in 1973 and has been with Stillman ever since. There's a, a culture of loyalty and respect. That came from Alan. 
and no matter what has changed, it, he is still the same. Well, considering it is your birthday, I'd like to raise a glass. I thank you very much. To business well done and well earned. And I don't know when your birthday is, but you too. For hey. me, 39 only once, I'll be 40 coming up next year. <laughs> 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 what a character! I'm telling you, you know what? It runs in the family. Uh, his son, Quality Meats, Quality yeah. Eats, the whole shebang. He did not even think about the restaurant business yeah. until mid 20s. And when you think about what he's done and the legacy now that he has, it's amazing. I tell you, when you see employees who've been with a company that long, it tells you everything you want to know about yeah. how Wilt's run.